Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarfil Bayraktar, and uh, I work for Cisco Systems. I'll be talking about uh, routing analytics and BGP-enabled uh, application development. Uh, what's routing analytics? It's a framework to observe and learn network behavior. Uh, it has real-time and historical components, and it actually has a very large uh, use cases. Um, it requires us to collect, store, and analyze routing data, mainly BGP, which is network reachability information, and IGP, or your topology data for your network. Uh, the scale is very large. We're talking about thousands of peers with hundreds of millions of prefixes uh, in the database. Uh, our goal with this project has been to uh, expose all the BGP data, uh, all the different address families or services. BGP carries a lot of different types of services through different address families and uh, we're exposing all that BGP data for analysis. Uh, we also incorporated the topology information into our analysis through uh, BGP LS, which is a way to capture IGP and transfer it to another node using BGP. Um, our goal is to support both the scripter and the developer. Uh, scripter, we can think about it as the traditional net apps, which has lots of uh, scripts to run uh, the network. And the developers, uh, today's DevOps, uh, which use a lot of uh, APIs. Um, I think it's important to note where this work uh, fits in this world of software-defined networking. Uh, SDN has five major components. Uh, the first one is the data collection. Obviously, if you're going to program your network, you need to know how it's behaving before you can change that behavior. And then you have to sift through all the data that you've collected and then make it available to applications. Applications are in the heart of uh, software-defined networking. They are the ones who, which will be monitoring and then making some decisions, generating policies to feed into an orchestrator uh, which will then push these back to the network and reconfigure the network. Obviously, you have to continually monitor your network. And the work we're doing with analytics fits into the data collection and analytics in the world of SCN, and we think that it's going to be extremely important. Uh, what we mean by BGP-enabled applications is that it's the BGP data has a very rich set of intelligence in it that has not been actually explored by developers yet. Uh, it looks quite uh, confusing and it has uh, lots of numbers. Uh, we're hoping that using this data, the developers will be able to analyze their network, analyze the network performance. You can check for security holes. Obviously, internet security has, is going to be even more important. You can look at the capacity, stability, and health of the network. Uh, you, uh, both NetApps or DevOps, uh, they, you can incorporate other uh, data sources into the database to make the analysis better, such as geolocation, where the prefixes are originated from. Uh, you can look at router configurations and uh, create sophisticated applications. Uh, the Cisco's routing analytics platform that I will be sharing with you today is a, a combination of a group of key technologies. Because the question is, why has the, hasn't the routing analytics taken precedence in the industry yet? Why aren't there applications based on that? The reason is that uh, there had to be key technologies that had to come together at this point that enables that. The first one is BGP monitoring protocol, which allows us to uh, uh, collect data from the network in a scalable and efficient way. One-to-one -one BGP peering to collect routing data doesn't scale. And it inter it's also very intrusive because you actually asking you're asking network operators to touch the routers, and nobody wants to do that. BMP BGP monitoring protocol is designed specifically to allow streaming of BGP data in a one-to-many fashion from the network. Uh, the topology view: how your internal networking conf uh, configured? What are your topology? Uh, what are your nodes? How? What are your interfaces? What's the uh, what's the metric? And BGP LS is the new address family that captures the IGP information, puts it in a BGP packet, and ships it to a, a BGP peer, or in this case, a B BMP server. Um, the collection part is very tricky because you're dealing with hundreds of peers. Each has at least 500,000 prefixes, so it's a very 
a high performance job. And we have a collector which is open source. It's called openbmp.org. And uh, we are using that technology. Obviously, how do you manage the database? What type of database technology do you use? SQL, NoSQL? Uh, that had to be sorted out. Uh, and then the modern APIs. You, know, you don't have to log into the router, grab a CLI, and then sift through it with a Perl script, but use the modern APIs like REST and JSON and all the new development environments enabled us to develop this platform that I'll be showing you. In a nutshell, BMP is a way for BGP, message to, BGP messages to be streamed over a TCP session to a collector. So you have your router, which you enable BMP. It has BGP peers. And then once the BMP is enabled, it sends every packet that it receives from the peers to a server. Uh, it's non-intrusive. It's designed to be non-intrusive. It's not part of your BGP mesh and it supports all the address families. Uh, this is a quick picture of how it works. So you have your network which, with uh, lots of BGP peers. You enable BMP, preferably on your edge router, but it can be in your internal network. And you configure it to send the data to a collector, a server. And then uh, it starts capturing every packet that comes from a BGP peer to the collector with a per peer header. And then the collector inserts the data. Well, actually, the collector first parses the data and then inserts it in the tables. And we use the uh, MySQL database. Then the access to the database is through a REST API, or you can have a plugin that uh, can talk to a, a SDN controller, such as Open Daylight. Um, one thing that's very important to highlight about BMP is that without BMP, if you have a BGP peering with a router, you are still receiving BGP information. But what you are receiving is after that router made the decision as to which routes it will accept. So if it doesn't accept the route, you don't get to see it as a BGP peer. With BMP, we are actually monitoring every BGP packet coming to the router. You can put on the router an import policy to drop every prefix that's coming to the router. BMP collector will still have a copy of those packets. That opens up a whole new era in terms of uh, collecting data because uh, if you're getting attacked, uh, somebody introducing AS loops, uh, uh, malformed packets that the router drops because the we as vendors worked very hard to you know, eliminate bad packets at the edges, but that doesn't mean you're not getting uh, really bombarded by that. With BMP, you will have access to that. You will also have access to pre-policy or pre-rib data, which means before the policy, you had these many prefixes coming to you. And then we also know what is what are the prefixes after the policy. That opens up the door to uh, evaluate how efficient your policies are. Is this what you really expected the router to filter? And this is the overall architecture. So in the network, you have your routers and peers. And we have a distributed uh, collector, OpenBMPD. Uh, and it is an open source uh, project. You can look at it at openbmp.org. And then we have a distributed MySQL databases. And then the applications can interact with the data through a REST API or uh, a plugin. Uh, a quick work about the uh, collector is that uh, it actually does a a very heavy duty job, but it does it in a distributed way. So it sorts out the updates as they come in. And it's important to note that uh, in our data set, and it's not a very big data set, we're receiving 5,000, 6,000 updates per second from each BMP router. So the collector, it's very important for collector to be high performance and high speeds. And we also keep the raw BGP updates. One of the questions we get a lot is that, uh, there is route views, there's a lot of academic institutions collecting BGP data, so what's different about you? Uh, the thing is that they're collecting data as raw BGP updates, and then if you want to do an analysis, you first have to sift through those updates. What we're doing is that we're actually uh, parsing those updates and inserting them into the tables, and we give you whatever you are interested in analyzing. So it's the data the, that we maintain and update and uh, analyze before it gets to you. And a quick word about uh, scale. Uh, we're talking about really hundreds and millions of pr uh, prefixes. And um, 
anybody can write a write code to do a BGP session, but maintaining really high uh, quality, big scale BGP sessions as we do in the vendor world is a whole other challenge. And uh, BMP needs to be able to deal with this type of data. Um, uh, it's very frequent updates. The update packets are not very much packed, so you get bits and pieces of information, and all of that we handle through our, uh, our program. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to uh, move on to the uh, demo, but uh, quickly, so th this is the apps. Oh, so what I'm going to show you today is the uh, UI, uh, GUI that we have developed, giving a, a look at the data we have collected. Everything in this UI is an API call to the database. We're just using some of the uh, visualization techniques to show you what the data looks like. Now, from that point of view, you'll see that it's going to look like a monitoring station. And it is in that sense. But what really we're aiming for is to be able to do the predictive analysis going forward. NetApps traditionally react to network outages, what happens in the network. And we need to change that. They need to be able to uh, visualize their network way ahead of time, uh, analyze it, uh, see what will happen if you lose a net, if you lose a uh, link, uh, you know, if the traffic is being shifted by the people you're peering with through route advertisement. All of these are more complicated, more complex, uh, but ab uh, absolutely necessary applications that we hope to show you. But uh, with that, I'm going to show you the U, uh, uh, UI that we developed. And um, so this is showing the number of BMP routers we have. This is the routers that has BMP enabled. We have 12 of them. Through these 12 BMP routers, we are monitoring, we're getting data from 727 peers. So if you didn't have BMP, you would have needed 727 BGP sessions to monitor every packet coming from those peers. With BMP, 12 gives you 727, which is fantastic. Um, we are able to, we can just um, click on the uh, location. These are the locations, and this is the BMP router. What it does is it goes and opens up a BMP card, and also the peers you're monitoring through this BMP router. I have to mention that this is live data. Uh, this is happening right now, so if something goes down, we'll be able to see it. And a quick note about our data sources. We have uh, some friendly service providers who allowed us to receive their internet routes. Uh, one of them is NTT, and the other one is uh, Telstra. Uh, level three is another one, and we have some research routers sending us the data. So this particular router, R1.C, has 30, uh, 34, 35 uh, peers. Uh, what we're showing here is the IP address of the uh, BMP router and what type of peers it has, V4, V6, uh, and the location. Also the downstream ASs. All the ASs, uh, all the prefixes with these ASs in the AS path coming from the peer. Now, more interestingly, we can go to the peer view. Um, with the peer view, we are actually able to look at the routing table of a router on our UI, and that's real time. So you don't really need to log into the router to see the uh, routing table and what's happening. Let's pick a router. Uh, let's go to San Jose. This is the one I have in the lab. Uh, let's see. So this is the peer card. It tells you about the uh, TCP port, IP addresses, AS numbers, and names. Uh, we are receiving 542,000 routes, and that's the size of the internet IPv4 table right now. Uh, we're not doing, we're not applying any policy, so post-rip is exactly the same as the pre-rip. Uh, its location is in San Jose, in my lab. These are the downstream AVSs. Now, if I click on the routing table button, what it's doing is it's sending an API request to the database telling me, uh, telling it, give me all the prefixes coming through this uh, uh, peer. And if I click on one of the prefixes, is that it brings up the location of the prefix. This happens to be in GE. Um, and then we are drawing a quick uh, uh, path how this prefix is accessed 
uh, starting with this BMP router. That's basically the AS path visualization. Same information is actually right here. This is the AS path that we are showing here. But the difference is that by putting the uh, names of the ASs, it becomes uh, much more meaningful to the human eye. Uh, it's, you can see the business relationships between these two. So it goes through Telianet to Caucasus to, so it's the right uh, address block. Uh, we're constantly improving this. We are incorporating uh, routing registry information as well as who is. A uh, quick word about the AS view. So we can put uh, your AS number here. It will tell us the information about your AS as it's listed in the WHOIS database. All the prefixes uh, originated by your AS. And then we also look at who is upstream from your AS and who is downstream from your AS. And with that, we can draw a quick topology of how your network, how you are connected. So this is Cisco Systems. And Cisco is using uh, several uh, providers. 2914 KPN, uh, Telionet, and then uh, downstream from Cisco, I see UUNet, MCI, or today it's called Verizon, and we were very surprised to see what's Verizon doing behind Cisco. And we found out in the database that there is some sort of an IPv6 prefix showing up behind us, and that's something to be looked at. Um, and that's the beauty of being able to visualize what's coming to your network. So I could type another um, AS name or number here, and obviously Google is always an interesting one uh, to see how they're connected. I always wanted to know what do they look like. Obviously what we are going to see with this is the, um, is the Google's connectivity from the data set that I, we have. So if you are a service provider and you're collecting data from all of your peerings, you'll have a much uh, better view of how things are. So Google uh, is 15169 AS number. We are seeing 323 prefixes originated by Google. And uh, we're going to develop some more. We'll be able to click on the prefix and see who they are. But let's look at how Google is connected visually. So downstream, upstream AS's. OK, so this is Google in the middle. And that's YouTube. That's not a surprise. They acquired that company. They put it behind their network. And I actually went out and checked on the internet what all these companies are. Um, they are partners or they are companies that Google actually acquired. So it's a very interesting view that you couldn't have before. And this is with the data, BGP data set that we have. Now, um, link state view is the topology of your network. So what I am showing here as the topology is real time. It's coming from a lab that I built in my uh, laboratory. But uh, you know, it, from your network, we receive this information through BGP LS. So traditionally, if you want to know the topology of a network, you have to have an IGP connection. You have to be part of that network. And network engineers hate that. Because once you're part of that network, then they might accidentally send traffic to you instead of one of their nodes. So BGP LS uh, removes that condition. So you can put IGP packets into a BGP packet and ship it as a BGP packet. And you have no forwarding issues after that. And we're drawing this based on BGP LS information. In addition, we have added uh, SPF calculations to this. So if I click on this particular node, which is in Seattle, presumably, um, I can actually see what is the shortest path from that node to some prefix on the East Coast. So you can see if that's what's the best path. And we haven't done the integration yet, but you can imagine you have all these BGP prefixes coming to your network at the edges, and you have the uh, network topology and the links. You can do a what if analysis. If this link goes down, I know this is where I'm going to go, and uh, you can evaluate the situation. One last thing I want to show you, I got the two minute uh, warning, is the prefix analysis. And I think this applies to every network, not just uh, service providers. Prefix analysis gives you some information about the prefix, but also gives you the history of that prefix. So what happened with this prefix in the last hour or many hours, however you can figure it. Uh, so what I'm listing, what I'm showing here is these are all the sources where I learned the same prefix from. 
BNP routers, BGP peers. Then I pick a peer and I look at the history of this prefix as it comes from that peer. And what we have done is that we have uh, created a visual uh, representation of what's changing in the attributes of that prefix. Uh, in this case, the prefix is having ASPath differences. ASPath is changing and it's changed 38 times in the last hour. And uh, if I want to know what changed is that I look at the BGP data. Obviously, this is still very geeky. It's all numbers and we hope to put more visualizations to it. But those who work in the routing area immediately can see that there was an AS path, uh, which was this one. It was going through this 3561, but it switched to 3257. That means somewhere uh, farther away from you, there was a switch between how, the, how we were routing to this particular prefix. See, uh, traditionally, you can't see that from where you are, but using routing analytics, you can see the switch, and you may want to filter that one out if it's uh, changing all the time. Uh, so that's one of the really cool analysis. We don't have the BGP security analysis yet, but we intend to fully develop that. Are the prefixes I'm receiving from the network originating from the ASs that they should be originating? And how is the, B how is the data in the routing registries? Is it correct? So um, I'd like to close by saying that once the data is available to you as JSON formatted data, and it's big data, it's routing, but it's big data, what kind of visualizations could you do? What would you want to see for your network? And how would you want to use this platform? So we hope that this will open up a whole new area in the network analysis, network uh, uh, behavior learning and predicting.